In the last video I did, I showed some of the more basic features of our ranking system, as well as showed how tournament organizers can easily submit their events using Challenger Teo. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the new features I've added since then, as well as go over some of the more administrative functions for those who wish to know how it works or others who are interested in buying the system for their own uh, leagues or tournaments. First thing I'm going to look at is past events. Something that I changed in how event results are done is I added the whole function system with Ajax. In the past, if I had edited a user, after I click submit, it would have refreshed the ladder, refreshed the entire results list. And this became troublesome as tournaments got larger, uh, tournament organizers had to keep scrolling down to update the list. Now I have it so that it updates on the fly with Ajax without a refresh. Another feature you may be seeing here is this claim link. Claim link is available to all registered users on 8-Way Run. For this, I'm going to log into another user on, on uh, Firefox instead of Chrome. And right now, I'm logged into the account, test account. And I'm, right now, I'm looking at Winter Brawl 6 2012 Pool B. And as you can see, there are a few users that have not been claimed yet. So let's pick one particular user, Justin Wong. Everyone knows who he is, so easy to identify. And let's say I can claim. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say that I'm Justin Wong. And if I click Claim Result, now it says Test Account is claiming to be this player. And what happens is the tournament organizer, which is me, will be notified by email and private message that someone is claiming. That's an alert. Let's ignore that. You have new unread conversation. Claim in Winter Brawl 2012. Test account wants to claim an ID. Justin Wong, player 7. And I can go here and see that test account is claiming to be Justin Wong. Of course, I can approve or delete in this case because it's just for testing reasons. I'm going to say approve. I am approving this claim. This is just this is test account approve and there we go we can see that the page test account is now linked to Justin Wong of course we know that's not true test account is not actually Justin Wong so let's clear that out why why do we need this feature because you know what sometimes people enter tournaments in the real name and the real name nobody knows who it is this lets them claim the ID or they just managed to create an account on your system for the first time and uh, you know they want to link it to their account. The next things I'm going to go over are the team listings. Now on 8-Way Run I've used the Zenfora built-in phrasing system to rename teams to characters but whenever I say characters or teams I'm meaning the team system. So Right now we have a list of characters, usage statistics uh, in particular. And as you can see, this is a list of the character usage based on for all time in the Soul Calibur 4 League. As we can see in tournaments, Leisha has been the most popular confirmed character. But I know what you're saying. You know, popularity doesn't really mean anything. It only matters for whether or not a character is getting high ranking in tournaments. In which case, I have these options for top 16 players, top 8 players, top 1 player. If I were to click 1, I can say, oh my god, look at that. 9 players, well, 9 times in past tournaments, a Nightmare player has won a tournament. So as we can see, Nightmare wins a large majority of tournaments. Well, not majority, but a large number of tournaments. Leisha in second place, Mitsurugi in third. And then I know what you're saying now. But Jaxel, there was a patch to Soul Calibur 5. Clearly, Nightmare isn't you know, winning all the tournaments anymore. Well, that's why we have this. A nice advanced search system where I can say, let's only list character usage since May. And of course, let's only show players who got first or better. So advance. And now we can see, look at that. Ezio is winning a large number of tournaments since the patch, as well as Mitsurugi has moved up to winning in first place. And now, now you're thinking something else. But wait a minute. All these Ezios, that was by Ramon at a weekly tournament. That really doesn't matter, does it? Well, that's why we have this other feature, minimum value. 
I can say, let's only search through results where the player only received at least 4,000 points. 4,000 points is a large point total. It's basically saying only majors or monthlies or big events. So advanced search. And of course, we're still searching for the player who gets first and since May. Click search. And now we can see that Viola has been winning most events. That is odd. I wasn't expecting that result. I'm sure you weren't either. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to go into some of the admin functions. Um, you, if you're interested, you can keep watching. You'll go. You'll uh, see more in depth of how you earn points in the system and what sort of percentages uh, players get depending on their uh, results in the event. So first thing I'm doing is I'm going to click on leagues. Naturally, you want to have ranks. You need a league. First thing you do is create a new league. Now, the league tag is pretty simple. It's just a less than 10 character tag. All it's really doing is telling the system where to find specific images for your league. I'll get into that later. League name, league description, ranking limit, ranking age. The ranking limit is how basically when a player competes in the league it's only going to count the number of events in the ranking limit their best blank events and the age should be within the net the within the last x months and score dispersal i will get into this by looking into an existing league salt caliber 5. as you can see our league tag is sc5 league name is salt caliber v and the description as you can see, our ranking limit, we have only the, a player's best five performances are counted and only performances within the last 12 months. And score dispersal, I have it completely filled out here. And the way it works is players who earn certain ranks get a percentage of the total event value. So if an event is worth 5,000 points and a player gets first, they get 5,000 points. If uh, a player is fifth, they get 50 they get 2,500 points. If a player is sixth, you know, six isn't here. But they didn't get fifth, but they are above seven. So what they're going to do is they're going to get the seven score, which is 37.5% of 5,000 points. I'm not a mathematician. I can't do that in my head, so let's move on. As you can see at the end, I have a setting for 999. What this basically means is anyone who gets between rank 14 and 999 gets 1% of the value. Basically, that's going to be anyone who doesn't get top 6, top 13. And uh, it's a partition point. You're going to get 1% for participating in an event. It's a consolation prize. Mark a league. You can mark leaves it leagues as inactive and then people will un be unable to add events to that league. Down here you'll also see a link for edit teams. Teams is what we showed before or characters with this page over here. This is uh, when you're editing an event and you can list what characters a player uses this is the list it gets it from. And as we see here teams have images and these teams go in the styles eight-way run folder and then the tag of your league our the tag of our league is se5 and then the team's tag which is listed over here so sir for cervantes.jpg if i open the new image in the new tag you can see it's located at styles eight-way run se5 sir.jpg and of course you can freely edit this as needed you really shouldn't need to you set it up once and you're done and of course, there's a link for Rebuild League. I'm not going to click that now, but whenever you rebuild a league, it recalculates all the event totals and all the ranks of that league. Besides leagues, you also need categories. Any event must be put in a league and a category. Same process to create a new category, but for now, I'll just show an existing league, or existing category for that matter majors now majors uh, categories have modifiers and maximum values modifier is simply a multiplication based on the event attendance so for instance let's say this major has 
10 people in it. That means the value of the major is going to be 150 times 10 people, which makes this major worth 1,500 points. Ideally, a major would have more than that. So let's say this major had 30 people. 30 people, that means that this major is worth 4,500 points. Now, the maximum value is basically saying this is the maximum this major, a major in this category, uh, any event in this category will be worth. So once you reach around, uh, let's see, this is 34 people, the event will max out at 5,000 points. A major can never be worth more than 5,000 points. This helps to alleviate issues where you can have a random event, like a weekly, that manages to have like 60 players and nobody knows where these players came from, but none of them are any good. So I, I hate to say it, but sometimes you don't want to give too many points to a player because an event is rounded off with scrubs. Down here, as just like leads, you can mark categories as, categories as active. Another thing you can do is use a custom score dispersal. Right now, I'm not using it for this league, so I'm going to ignore it. Now you'll notice with majors and invitationals, I have the modifier set to 1,000, while with all other events, I have it set to 150. Because generally, 150 points per player is fine. But for majors and finals, which will generally have either 8 players or 16 players, I always want the event to be worth 5,000. So this modifier just makes sure that we always reach the limit. Going back to what I was talking about before with... Uh, custom score dispersals. I'm actually using custom score dispersals only in this event, major pools. And just like, let's, you know what, let's lock, look at the leagues again so I can see the base. Okay, base 100% to 87.5, yada, yada, yada. In this custom score dispersal, I have generally the same thing, but you'll notice that there is no one rank and the two rank is set to zero. Since the um, score dispersal is done basically on a series of if statements, basically it's saying if the rank is two or higher, and in this case, when I say higher, I mean lower mathematically, because one is a higher rank than two, but it is mathematically lower than one. Basically, if you get first or second at a, at a major in a pool, you're going to get zero points. Why zero points? Because you're already getting a massive amount of points if you make it to finals. Since finals are worth 5,000. There's no reason for you to get two sets of points for the same event. Pools, major pools and major finals are ideally from the same event. So one and two get zero points since they're already getting points in finals. So if we look at some existing events, I'll, I'll browse the majors category, you can actually see how all this stuff works. Now, there's not many events that we actually have the full player list, and that would be the major category because it wasn't separated by pools or finals. And as you can see, we have a major here. Majors are worth a max of 5,000 points, and it takes about... 34 people to reach that max, if I, my math is correct. But we have 22 players in this event, and each player is worth 150 points. So if I bring up my calculator, 28 players times 150 points equals 4,200 points. Partisan got first, so he got 100% of those points, and everyone got lower in percentage as we go down with the consolation point of 1% at 17 and below. If I look at finals, we have a lot of uh, majors separated by finals and pools, so this is a bit easier to find. I can look at da, 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 Winter Brawl 6. Winter Brawl 6 finals. Since I have the 1,000-point modifier for the finals, that means this event is worth 5... Well, it would be worth 8,000, because 1,000 times 8 players is 8,000. But I have a maximum set up, so it gets maxed out of 5,000. And naturally, Link gets 5,000 points. And so on in downward percentages. 
But we have that custom uh, uh, score dispersion in pools. So click on that. I can see pool D. And as you can see, first and second don't get any points. Ramon and Woes, because what we saw before was in major finals. Ramon and Woes got points here, 2,500 and 4,375. So there's no reason to have two sets of points. You know, there was something I forgot to show before. Let me add in right here. With events, you can now add links. And you can add three types of links, media, threads, or your website. NEC Philly has a website here. This is the results thread to the event. And the media link, you can add as much media as you want. But specifically, I want to talk about playlists. If you add a YouTube playlist, when you go back to the events page, it will actually take that playlist, playlist GVN Winterball 2012, 65 videos, and embed it directly into the event. So let's say we go to Power Up. Power Up does not have any. So let's go to Final Round. Final Round, Soul Calibur 5, Final Round, Road to Evo 2012, 17 videos. Event is right here. Links are down at the bottom. So as you can see, there's lots of new features in this new version. And, you know, they do provide a statistical basis, as we show, saw before with the characters. So I'm hoping that in the future, tournament organizers will be more willing to submit events and try to keep information accurate, especially claim data, well, uh, user data for that matter, and character data, especially since characters go into these nice charts I spent a lot of time on. And if you want to talk about tier lists, everything is speculative, but there's only one tier list that can be proven by factual data, and that is tournament results.